Hey there, it's Bree, and these are my recent reads. So you'll have to forgive the lighting. I am standing by a window so there's natural light and there are clouds that keep passing over the sun so it might get really bright or really dark and I apologize for that if that's distracting. Anyway, today I wanted to talk about my recent reads. I have a couple of vlogs that went up recently for the Mafia Romance Readathon and the Historical Romance Readathon where I talk about the books that I read for those readathons in those vlogs so you can check that out if you want to hear about those books. But these are the books that I read outside of those readathons where I didn't talk about them in a vlog. The first book is probably the most exciting book out of all of these because I loved it so much and it took me by such surprise. It was Part of Your World by Abby Jimenez. I honestly, I picked this up from Book of the Month. This is a Book of the Month version of it and I got it even though I hadn't read it already and recently I've been buying a lot of books that I've already read and loved instead of buying books that I haven't read yet since I mostly read digitally, either audiobooks or ebooks. Those are usually my go-to. So buying physical books that I haven't read yet doesn't make a ton of sense because I have so many on my bookshelf that I need to read. So I normally don't do this but I've read I think all of Abby Jimenez's previous releases and they've been hit or miss for me. Some of them I really like, some of them were okay some of them I had mixed feelings on and I thought I would give this one a try. I didn't know anything about it. I didn't know what it was about. I went in completely without knowing what was going on because I didn't read the synopsis or anything and I ended up falling so desperately in love with this one. This is a book that brought out so many emotions in me and it was purely because of the romance and that usually doesn't happen. Usually if I'm reading a book that makes me cry, which very, very rarely happens, it's usually because of like some, si some sort of outside source or maybe there's some sort of tragedy that's happening to the characters or something. It's not usually because of the romance, but I was so deeply invested in the romance in this book that it, it seriously made me cry because of how intensely I was shipping these two characters. Oh my gosh, they're romance romance was so strong and so deep and so beautiful. And the other kind of interesting thing about this is it's a closed door romance. It's not steamy at all. And a lot of times when there are books like that, I feel a little bit disconnected from the characters. I don't know. I, I know that Jen from the book Refuge has put it that it feels like they're slamming the door on your face. And normally that's how I feel, but I didn't feel that way about these characters. And I think it's because the chemistry was so strong and their romance was so strong. So the reason why it's called Part of Your World is because the hero and the heroine come from two totally different worlds. This is a small town kind of guy and I think normally when you have like big city girl small town guy which is what this is she's also a doctor she's a super super successful doctor who comes from this like prestigious doctor family and like they basically have always had like a head surgeon or whatever in this doctor family everyone in that family has been an amazing doctor including her brother and her parents and everyone and he's from this super 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 small town where everybody knows everybody else usually when you have that the big city girl small town guy you usually have the guy who's super grumpy, and then the heroine is like the sunshine heroine, maybe a little bit ditzy, but that's not how this one is. She's someone who is dealing with a lot of trauma from her family because she has really, really high expectations from her family. They expect her to marry someone who they feel is good enough for her, and she has gotten out of a relationship that was emotionally abusive from a man who is, I think, a head surgeon at the hospital, and he's who, like, on the outside seems like the perfect guy, but he was really terrible to her. She's kind of dealing with that and a lot of like the weight on her shoulders from her family's expectations. And then he is such a sunshine, cinnamon roll, golden retriever kind of hero. And he was just absolutely everything. I adore him. He's one of my all-time favorite heroes. In fact, after I read this, and you'll see <laughs> in the next books that I read, I was on such a cinnamon roll hero kick. Even though he's not like super innocent or virginal or anything, he is very like super sweet and caring and that I just like went on a kick after that. I was like, I actually looked up a list of like virgin heroes because first of all, I'm doing a video of virgin hero romances that I love, but also I wanted to find heroes that had like his vibe. Yeah, they end up meeting because she ends up in the small town. She's on her way to going to her aunt's funeral and she ends up like swerving off the road and going off the road because of a raccoon or something that's in the road. And he ends up kind of rescuing her. And even though she has called for a tow truck, he's like, yeah, so the dude who does the tow truck, he's actually at the bar right now. I just saw him. So he's probably not going to be here and you're going to be here for a while. So let me help you out. And you know, she's by herself in a small town and everything. And so she's a little bit wary of him, but he's very like hands off and he's like, you know, 
she doesn't roll her window all the way down and he doesn't come too close to her. He also has a dog and he like loves animals and stuff. Oh my God, it's so great. But yeah, so he ends up like helping her and then later she's looking for food or something and she ends up at the bar, which is like the only bar and restaurant in that town. She ends up there and he's there and their meet cue is just so perfect because it just kind of, there's no like blatant throwing them together kind of thing. It just happened so organically and it felt so natural and their chemistry was just so strong and the conflict in this made sense to me. It was it was frustrating in a lot of ways because it's it, the conflict is really coming from her family and her family's expectations, which sometimes can be really frustrating as a reader and it usually is for me, but for some reason, I fully understood why she felt like her hands were tied. And there is like, there is a moment when shit hits the fan and I remember it happening and like my stomach dropping. And then the, there is a phone call between them that they have when like shit's hitting the fan and I like got teared up and I do not, I am not a crier. I don't cry, especially over like romantic things. Like I, I love it, I get swoony, I get butterflies, I love it, but I'm not like deeply emotionally affected by that type of thing normally. This book got me this book got me. I adore this book with all of my heart and soul. I loved it so, so much and I cannot recommend it more. So then, yeah, like I said, I went on kind of a journey looking for just super sweet heroes and I found a list on Goodreads of virgin heroes. So I started reading a few books from that list and it took me in, on a journey. I didn't quite find what I was looking for. Um, so I ended up doing a reread that we'll talk about in a little bit, but I did read a couple of books that were interesting. I DNF'd a couple of books too um, that were on that list. But the first book I picked up was Trucker. But this one I thought was really interesting and it drew me in because the hero is a trucker. He's a truck driver and he's also a virgin hero. He's pretty young. It felt almost new adulty. The heroine is dealing with a lot of trauma and she is a runaway. And I think, if I remember correctly, I think she was maybe in the foster care system or something. She ends up actually hitchhiking and he's the one who picks her up and he's like a trucker. And he mostly is picking her up because he's like, you know, if anyone picked her up aside from me, something horrible could have happened to her. So he almost is like picking her up kind of to help her out and to rescue her and everything. But then they end up having a lot of chemistry and she ends up going home with him and everything. And they're, the antagonist in this was a little bit over the top. It was one of those, one of those situations where the antagonist was very one dimensional, like there was not really a reason for her to be the way that she was and for her to be so vindictive and everything other than jealousy. So I felt like that wasn't fleshed out enough, but I felt like this book was pretty good. I ended up giving it four stars. It's not my favorite, but it was still, it was a nice palate cleanser. It was a quick read. I read it in a day. And then I ended up picking up Deliver by Pam Godwin. So I heard about this book and it was, it's been on my TBR for a while, but I didn't realize that it was a virgin hero. And <laughs> this also was not what I was kind of looking for, but I still really, really liked it. It's a really, really good book, but oh my gosh, it is dark. This book is dark, 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 and it is not going to be for everyone. Huge, huge trigger warnings because it deals with sex trafficking and the heroine is the one who is sex trafficked and she also is a sex trafficker. You know, obviously there is a lot of viol sexual violence in this one, non-consent. There's just, it's a lot. It's a lot and it's dark. There's death, there's torture. It's not going to be for everyone, but my God, if anyone can do it, it's Pam Godwin. She somehow is able to infuse like these super um, like rich and lush romances within these super dark books. And I just appreciate that so much. But this will not be for everyone. This is the first in a series, but it didn't end on a cliffhanger, I don't think. I mean, it ended on a little bit of cliffhanger, but the romance kind of wrapped up. Basically, the heroine, like I said, she was sex trafficked herself, and now she is a sex trafficker. And she has done, She we have very, very morally gray characters. The heroine is extremely morally gray. I feel like it takes a lot for you to get on her side. It's very like, and it's on page, the things that she does. And she has trafficked a lot of people. I feel like though there is redemption in this for the most part, but it's still, she still has done some not great things. Um, but anyway, when the book opens up, she has her eye on this kid who actually reminded me a lot of Tim Tebow. And I almost wonder if that's who he was based on. Tim Tebow played for the Gators. I went to UF, so I'm a big Gators fan. Tim Tebow played for the Gators and he is like, he was like well known because 
he is super, super religious. And there was even an interview where someone straight up asked him if he was saving himself for marriage, and he was. And he's a very good looking guy, big quarterback. And that was kind of how the hero in this book was described. And so she has to basically mold him into what her client wants. And she does that by torturing him. So she ends up kidnapping him along with the help with the guy who actually kidnapped her. She works with him, but as you can tell, it's it's very layered. It's very intense. It's not going to be for everybody. I don't recommend it for everybody, but my gosh, it was really, really good. And I felt like, I felt like it was so well done considering it was one of those books where you're reading it and you're like, how are we going to get past the fact that she has done some horrible, horrible stuff and she's currently doing horrible things to him? And how is this dynamic going to work? How is he ever going to be attracted to her when she's done this type of stuff. I mean, I feel like you get that a lot in, in captor captive type romances when the roles are reversed and everything. But yeah, it's just, it's always interesting to me how authors are able to do that. And I don't tend to love captor captive romances because I feel like it's really hard to get past some of the horrible things that the captor does. And, and it was hard. I mean, like it's hard at first, but, but it ends up working out. I gave that one five stars. And then after that, a book that I had pre-ordered on Libro FM, which is The Office BFF, Tales of the Office from Two Best Friends Who Were There. That book ended up coming available and I had pre-ordered it. So I immediately picked that one up and read it because I do listen to The Office Ladies podcast. It's a rewatch podcast with the girl who plays Pam and the girl who plays Angela in The Office. And they go episode by episode and like break it down. They break down the episode, but then they also talk about their memories from filming those episodes. And I am just such a huge fan of The Office. And my OTP, my absolute favorite two characters, my favorite couple of all time is Jim and Pam. They will always be my favorite couple, even though it comes from a cheating relationship, like an emotional cheating relationship. But it's friends to lovers, which also isn't my favorite. But my God, I am so deeply invested in that couple and so rewatching The Office with that podcast has been a lot of fun and they've been talking about this book that they were coming out with where they deep dive even more into what it was like to be on The Office and their experience and everything and it was really good it was really really fun if you like The Office this will make you want to rewatch The Office and check out all like the pinpoint the things that they talk about in the different episodes they talk about in this book I also highly recommend the podcast too after that I did a dedicated reading vlog my members picked a book that they wanted me to read and I did a reading vlog where I just read that book I went to spoilers. I went detailed into my thoughts like play by play as I was reading the book and that was a members only vlog that I posted recently. I read The King Spinster Bride by Ruby Dixon. This one I didn't realize was a prequel to a series. Is the rest of the series out? Hold on, let's see. It is. Oh, there's, yeah, there's like a lot of books in this series. I didn't know that, but this is a book that's been in my TBR for a while and it was super short. It was available. I found it, I think it was on Hoopla or Scribd? And it was Scribd. I found it on Scribd and it was only like a, a few hours long. So I read it in a day and I vlogged it and oh my gosh, I fell in love with this book. It was so, so good. This is an age gap romance. It's a fantasy romance, but it's an age gap romance where the heroine is older than the hero. And when you open up in the beginning of the book, the hero and the heroine come from two different kingdoms, I guess, who are, who are battling. And the hero has been kidnapped by the heroine's people and she's kind of protecting him because he's kidnapped as a kid and she's kind of protecting him because his father ends up killing her father and everyone wants to kill him in retaliation but she's very protective of him and saves him but it turns out that you know he goes back because his father takes over or whatever and he has loved her ever since so he is an ultimate pining hero it is absolutely so satisfying so indulgent i love this book and then a book came available on libby which is happiness for beginners by Catherine center. Um, I've read a few books. I've, re I've read two books, two of Catherine Center's most recent books, I believe, maybe three. And I've really liked her books previously. So I think when I was on Libby, I was kind of just going into author's backlists and I saw that this was a book. Is this, I don't know if this was a new release or if it was released. Okay. Yeah. This one was published in 2015. So this is one of Catherine Center's older books. And actually I really like this one. This one, I feel like if you've been avoiding Catherine Center because you don't like women's fiction and her books tend to lean more towards women's fiction, they do have strong romance in it, you will, you probably will really like this one because this actually felt much more romancy than her newer books feel. I loved this one. I was a little bit worried though because <laughs> 
Um, I thought this was going to be more of a survival type of romance because the heroine is going on one of her like she's going to find herself kind of journeys. So a year after she's gotten divorced she decides to sign up for this like survivalist kind of hiking trip and it's a hiking trip that is like apparently well known and people have died on this hiking trip. They got seriously injured and they just take you through it through this hike and I think it's like a three week hike. It sounds like my worst freaking nightmare. I am not a nature person. I don't like the outdoors. I don't like bugs. I don't like creatures. I like sleeping in a bed. It sounds like a nightmare, like to be away from medical help. Yeah, no, pass. But anyway, she decides to do this. And she is, in the beginning of the book, she's bringing her very weird dog. Um, her dog has a lot of issues, like skin issues, all sorts of stuff. It's actually very cute. But she's bringing her dog to her brother's house. Her brother is very, very flaky though. She's going to drop off her dog because she's gonna be gone for three weeks. So her brother has agreed to watch her dog. So she goes to his apartment and he is newly graduated graduated from college. He has a college roommate who's been like his best friend forever. They've been best friends forever. They live together, but there's a party going on and her brother has forgotten. It's not surprising to her because this is the type of thing that he does all the time. And she ends up running into his brother's, her brother's best friend, his roommate, who like they've known each other forever, but he's kind of like, she's barely paid attention to him. The first time that they met was at her wedding and like she has never paid attention to him, but he has been pining after her for ever since he met her. He was desperately in love with her and he's always been desperately in love with her. And you kind of see like they talk about m different moments in time when he has noticed her and she barely remembers that he was even at this like place or time in her life. And he remembers like every single detail. It's actually very cute, but he's extremely charming, extremely charismatic. And it turns out that he's going on this hike too. And they end up having to drive together. And when they get there, she tells him like, let's pretend we don't know each other. You know, I don't want this to be a thing, whatever, because they have an almost kiss moment. And then he kind of like freaks out on her and she, He's like, yeah, like, we're not doing this, whatever. So it, they kind of get off on the wrong foot. But everyone who is on this hike is all a lot younger than her. And they all like kind of gravitate toward him. It wasn't too survivally. I mean, it was a little bit survivally, but it wasn't like torturously survivally, <laughs> if that makes sense, which I was a little bit worried that it was going to be, but it wasn't. And the romance was super strong and super sweet. This was also a closed door romance as well, but oof, it was so, so good. And then you guys, I still was like that, Happiness for Beginners helped a little bit with my craving for a super sweet hero, but I finally just gave in and ended up rereading Archer's voice. You guys know, I, how many times have I reread? I've read it five times according to Goodreads. It's probably been more. Archer's voice, if you somehow don't know if you're new here, one of my all-time favorite books. I talk about this book all the time. I recommend it all the time. One of my all-time favorites, but I find I reread it again. This one has my one of my favorite virgin heroes in it. It's a small town romance. The heroine, whose name is happens to be Brie. I swear that's not why I love this book. <laughs> But um, the heroine is escaping some serious trauma that happened. Her father was killed right in front of her. And so she's kind of running away from that. And she's on this road trip and she ends up in Pelion, I think is the name of the small town. But she ends up there and she's renting a cabin there. One of the first people she actually runs into is Archer and she's leaving a drugstore and she's carrying like a bunch of tampons and almond joys or something and her bag rips and it just the tampons go everywhere the almond joys go everywhere and he like helps her and she's like kind of fumbling around and just like oh my gosh you know I swear I'm not gonna eat all these all at once anyway so throughout this entire interaction he doesn't speak to her and that is because he has a vocal cord injury and he cannot speak he's a little bit standoffish he has a little bit of amusement in his eyes when she's like joking around but finally she's just like can you say something you know like put me out of my misery and say something and like he kind of, that's when he kind of like spooks a little bit and, and runs away. But she felt a, a, a connection to him and was drawn to him and starts like asking around the small town about him. And he becomes more and more mysterious as she's asking about him because he is the town loner. And then you kind of learn his background and everything. And yeah, it's just, it's so romantic and so swoony. There's so many moments that just uh, hit you right in the heart. It's one of those books that I wish I could read for the first time. Even like rereading it still gives me butterflies, but man, the first time I read it, what I would do to 
read it for the first time. And then after that, I have, I got an email from Audible and they were just like, oh, check out these books that are included in your plan. And I haven't looked through the Audible Plus catalog recently to see what was available, but I saw that this book was. It's called For the Love of Music by Julie Lipson. And this is one of those books that has a full cast and has sound effects and everything, and it's a romance. And so I was like, yes, finally, more of these, because I really like the ones by Cara Bastone. So I was very excited about this one. I went into it without knowing anything about it, and it was just super okay. Like, even with the whole full cast and the sound and everything, it just solidifies the fact that it's not just that. Like, I, I'm not just blinded by that. Oh my gosh, the lighting is so bad with this. I'm not just blinded by that with the Carabas Stone books because the, the story of the Carabas Stone books are really good because the story in this one wasn't great. Girlfriend and boyfriend who are both pianists, he has entered this really big competition that if it's like, it's a competition to determine like the world's best piano player and they get to go on tour and everything and it's been his dream forever. And it's kind of secretly been the heroine's dream as well, but it's been, he's been much more vocal about it and she kind of secretly entered into this contest to see if she could compete and she ends up getting into and then he ends up getting like jealous and the day that she finds out that she got the part two and so did he, he actually had proposed to her, he was already planning on proposing to her. So it's just them kind of dealing with the fact that they both love each other but also like how do you balance your selfish needs and your dreams versus the person you love's dreams and especially when they're competing against each other and it was just Okay, it wasn't great. I also read another mediocre book. This is a book that I actually had on Libro FM, The Dating Dare by J.C. Lee. This is the second book I've given a chance by J.C. Lee. I will still give J.C. Lee a chance. I didn't love the first book. I think it gave the first book in the series three stars too, and this one three stars as well. But it might just be the series. I need to read like something else by J.C. Lee before I like give up on her. It's the second book in the Sweet Mess series, and this follows the heroine who was the bartender in the first series. And I really liked her in the first book because I loved the bar that she she worked at, the brewery that she worked at, because the names of the beers were just hilarious in it. So I really like that part of it. And then this one is a best friend's husband's brother's <laughs> romance. <laughs> I, I don't know if that's actually a thing, but anyway, it's the, it's the hero from the other book. It's his brother and it's his romance, like the two of them together. And this one is a fake dating situation. He is about to go to Paris to pursue what he is saying is his dream job, what he's trying to convince himself is his dream job. He's a fashion photographer, but really his passion actually is in something else that he has given up because of something that happened a while ago. Um, but he has this like amazing job opportunity in Paris. So he's about to go to Paris in like a month or something, but he ends up having a really great night with a heroine. He's like, I'm leaving in a month, but why don't you give me like four dates? Let's just have fun in that time. And then, you know, we'll say goodbye when I go to Paris and we all know how that's gonna end. But the heroine is totally up for it because she is coming out of a really bad relationship and she's very, very gun shy when it comes to relationships. So it's like the perfect setup for her. But then of course they fall in love and then there's obviously the issue of him leaving and is he gonna give up what is seemingly his big dream and all of that stuff and it was just very okay. It was just very okay. Anyway, that was the last book that I read recently. I am currently reading a book that I'm really, really enjoying. And I think I think it was Ashley from Bookish Realm who read this book. And I think she even reread it because she liked it so much. It's called Love Boat Taipei by Abigail Hing Wen. Obsessed with the cover of this book. I need to get a physical copy of this book. But they had it at my library and I decided to pick it up and I'm currently reading it now. And I will talk more about that book when I finish it in my next recent reads video. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books. It's especially if you've read this book because I loved it so freaking much. Yeah, let me know down below if you've read this book, any of the other books, what you thought of them. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, happy reading.